Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Sinatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biology playlist. In the last videos, we talked about the muscle, muscle contraction, the mechanism of muscle contraction, muscle fatigue, and the oxygen death. Today, we shall continue the musculoskeletal system, but instead of focusing on the musculo, let's talk about the skeletal. Please understand that your body has a skeleton, but each one of your cells has a cytoskeleton too. The cytoskeleton was discussed in video number 10 in this biology playlist. Today, we're talking about the real gross skeleton. Gross here doesn't mean disgusting, it means big. Skeletons at biology, there is exoskeleton and there is endoskeleton. Which one is present in humans? The answer is the endoskeleton. Because an exoskeleton is a skeleton that covers the whole organism from the outside. Example is arthropod. If you have an exoskeleton as an organism, I have good news, I have bad news. Good news, it's gonna cover the whole body, offering you all kinds of protection. Here's the bad news, you must shed it away and get rid of it in order to grow your body. This might work for small organisms, but for big organisms such as humans, it's a disaster. Imagine that every time you grow, you get rid of your entire skeleton. That would be crazy. That's why thankfully you have an endoskeleton. It's just a chassis, it's on the inside. It does not cover the whole organism and therefore there is no need to shed it away as you grow up. Let's talk about the endoskeleton in humans. There is axial skeleton in the midline and there is appendicular skeleton away from the midline. Let's go. Axial skeleton from head to toe. First you get the skull. Then as you go down you hit the hyoid bone in the floor of your mouth or the top of your neck. And then the vertebral column or the backbone. Don't forget my rib cage which has sternum and it has the ribs but not the scapulae, because the scapulae are part of the appendicular skeleton. And that's about it for the axial endoskeleton. Now let's talk about the appendicular. In the upper extremities versus the lower extremities. In the upper extremities, you have the shoulder girdle or the pectoral girdle. Pectoral means this area right here. And then this shoulder girdle, which is made of scapula and clavicle, is holding up the humerus radius and ulna, and then carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and the phalanges. Let's go. How about the lower extremity? Start with the girdle that's holding it in place, and that's the lovely hip bone holding the femur, tibia and fibula. Instead of carpals, say tarsals. Instead of metacarpals, say metatarsals. And instead of the phalanges, well, there's no instead. There are also phalanges. What are the functions of bone? Mechanical, protective, metabolic, hematopoiesis. Mechanical, it provides attachment for muscles. Protective, the skeleton protects your internal organ. Metabolic, the skeleton has bones. Bones are full of calcium and phosphate. If your blood lacks calcium, you'll borrow some calcium from bone. If your blood has too much calcium, you will lend your calcium to the bones. And don't forget hematopoiesis. Poiesis means synthesis, generation, creation. Hemato from he means blood. Contains stem cell for blood formation. Thank you, bone marrow, which lies in the core of your bone. Bone structure, let's go. We have two types of bone. Compact bone, very strong and spongy or cancellous bone, less strong. The bone is covered by periosteum. It protects the bone, it contains pain receptors. You can get the manliest man in your class and let me hit his periosteum. In no time, he'll be crying like a baby. It is very painful. That's why bone marrow biopsies, where the doctor hits your bone marrow with the needle, by piercing the periosteum is a very painful procedure in hematology. The periosteum provides a site for muscle attachment and some periosteal cells are capable of differentiating into bone cells called osteoblasts. Back to the actual bone. This is called the shaft or the diaphysis made of compact bone. This is called the top or the head or the epiphysis made of spongy, cancellous bone. 
Between the head and the shaft, there is the neck, the metaphysis. The part of the bone closer to the core or the center of your body will be called the proximal end. The part that is away from your core is going to be called the distal end. Imagine that this is your femur. The upper end is the proximal end because it's closer to the core of your body. And the lower part of the femur will be the distal end. What are the purposes of these ends? Articulate with the next bone in line to form a joint. Moreover, do not forget that in the core of your bone, there is the medulla, spongy, soft, contains bone marrow to make me some good blood cells, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. For the bone as a whole, the outer shell is compact bone, the inner shell is spongy, cancellous bone. It seems like I misspelled the word shell, like a doofus. Here, in the metaphyseal area, between the metaphysis and the epiphysis, just here, you'll find something doozy, the epiphyseal cartilage plate, aka the growth plate, to help babies grow into adults. How do they grow? How do they get bigger and larger and taller? It's thanks to their epiphyseal cartilage plate. As they grow up, this cartilage is gonna help lay some bone here and some bone here. More bone, I get taller. And that's why fractures in children are more worrisome than their adult counterparts. Why? Because in few cases, the fracture can hit the epiphyseal growth plate and therefore this baby will stop growing in this area. So imagine that I am young. I had an accident that affected the epiphyseal cartilage plate on my right radius but not the left. My right radius will stop growing but my left radius will continue to grow giving me unequal limbs for the rest of my life. Oops! Now let's compare between compact bone and spongy bone. Compact is another name, cortical, because it's on the outside, it's on the crust. How about spongy? Spongy is called trabecular. Cancellous. Tell me about the cavities. Well, the compact is so compact there is no space for cavities. How about the spongy? Well, it's called spongy because it has some cavities. All right. Next, strength. Compact is denser, harder high resistance to bending and torsion. Spongy is the opposite, less dense, less hard. Where do I find compact bone? In your cortex as opposed to medulla, in the outer shell, not the inner shell, in the diaphysis, not the epiphysis. What's the functional unit of the compact bone? The osteone, osteo means bone. How about here, just trabeculae? filled with holes. Function, I am compact, structure, weight bearing, but I am spongy. I will give you a greater surface area. I'll help you remodel your bone. I can make a lovely envelope around the bone marrow, etc. We have another classification for bones. We have lamellar bones and woven bones. You as an adult contains lamellar bones only. Could be compact, could be cancellous, but the moral of the story is you only have lamellar bone. How about woven? Woven is either the very young or the sick. Very young, immature, embryonic skeleton, fracture, callus. The sick, osteosarcoma, fibrous dysplasia. This is woven bone, not as good as lamellar bone. Bone cells. The main bone cells are called osteocytes. Osteo means bone, site means cell. Okay, how do we build up bone osteoblasts? How do you break down and cut down bone osteoclasts? The main bone cells are osteocytes. If you want to build up more, osteoblasts. If you want to cut down, osteoclasts. Don't forget, they are mesodermal in origin. Osteoblasts versus osteoclasts. Osteoblasts will build up bone. Osteoclasts will cut down bone. Since osteoblasts are builders, they synthesize matrix proteins and your bones are full of type 1 collagen. But how do osteoclasts break down? By degrading proteins and by acidification. Oh, they throw acid in the face of the bone. Now let's go to biochemistry. Bone composition. You have matrix and you have minerals. What's the matrix of my bone? It's collagen. What type of collagen? Type 1. If you want to make your collagen stronger, 
add some minerals such as calcium to that collagen, i.e. mineralize your matrix. Oh, that was deep. What else is in the matrix? Organic matrix components. Don't forget osteocalcin, osteopontin, osteonectin, fibronectin, etc. And growth factors to help your bone grow. Minerals are what you find in the periodic table. You have calcium, you have phosphate. Together, they are called hydroxyapatite minerals. Hydroxyapatite can generally refer to calcium and phosphate and can specifically refer to calcium phosphate and calcium hydroxide. We lay the minerals on top of the matrix. If you want me to summarize this slide in three seconds, you have matrix, collagen, and minerals, calcium. As infants grow up, they require adequate calcium, but not just for the youngsters. Even old people, when they have some diseases, they might benefit from calcium supplements. Your bone contains calcium, and please understand and recall the story of calcium and vitamin D. We talked about this before in a video titled Vitamin D in my biochemistry playlist. You need sunlight, you need your liver and gut and skin and liver again and your kidneys in order to give me the active form of vitamin D which will raise calcium in the blood. Next, let's talk about cartilage. What's the difference between bone and cartilage? Bones are hard, cartilages are firm, still strong but not as strong as bone, kinds of softer. If you don't believe me, put your finger on your skull, touch your forehead that's hard that's bone now touch the tip of your nose that's firm touch the skin on top of your gluteus maximus this is soft tissue bones have type 1 collagen cartilages type 2 collagen bones are vascular cartilages are avascular how do they eat then by diffusion from surrounding structures but they do not have any vessels to feed them that's why when the kid suffered from a fracture that affected his epiphyseal growth cartilage plate, it was over. This part of the body will stop growing. And this is so sad. Bones have osteocytes as their main cells. Cartilages have, not osteo, but chondrocartilage sites. In bones, their matrix, i.e. type 1 collagen, is calcified. But in cartilages, their matrix, i.e. type 2 collagen, is not calcified. And that's why bones are hard, but cartilages are firm. Don't forget, type 1 collagen is in bone, but type 2 collagen is in cartilage, i.e. cartilage. When two bones come and articulate with each other, they make a joint, which is the articulation between two adjacent bony surfaces. This is what doctors mean by joint, unlike Joe Rogan. This articulation between two mobile surfaces is gonna create friction. Oh, 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 I need a fluid to lubricate the engine. I mean to lubricate the joint. What's that fluid? It's called synovial fluid. Who made that synovial fluid? Your synovial membrane or synovium, which lines the inside of the joint capsule. How do we put everything in place? Ligaments, baby. That's why if we flip you upside down, your bones are not gonna detach from each other because of ligaments. And as you remember, these articular surfaces are covered by cartilages. A bone from here, a bone from here, a joint in between. Joint capsule is surrounding the joint. It is lined by the synovium or the synovial membrane, which makes the synovial fluid for lubrication. The cartilage here at the articular surface is called the articular cartilage, not to be confused with the epiphyseal cartilage plate cartilage, which is between the epiphysis and the metaphysis. Epiphyseal growth plate is going to help you grow, but the articular cartilage is going to help you articulate. On the outside, there is cortical bone, very strong. On the inside and on the periphery, you have cancellous or trabecular bone, less strong. If I cut a cross section throughout your bone, I will see this aversion system, which we'll talk about in the next video. Just remember for now, you have type 1 collagen, and the main cells of the bone are osteocytes, 
The main mineral is calcium. And these are the types of joints in your body. You have fibrous joints, fibrocartilaginous joints, and synovial joints. Fibrous joints gives you a minimal range of movement, almost no movement, such as the sutures in your skull. How about fibrocartilaginous, limited movement, such as the symphysis pubis, which during pregnancy and labor can get more lax and can widen a little to increase the space or the diameter of the pelvic cavity to allow the baby to come out of mommy's womb. Third, synovial, the widest range of movement, such as your shoulder joints. You can move your shoulder up, down, flexion, extension, circumduction, all over the place. Most extremity joints are synovial. If you like this video, you will love my renal physiology course, as well as my general pharmacology course. You can download them on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.